Legumes have this remarkable property that they can associate with bacteria from the soil. They can uh, grow a new organ called a root nodule. The bacteria live inside the root nodule. And once the bacteria are there, the bacteria are converting nitrogen into ammonia through an enzyme. This is still energy intensive. As um, biochemists, we would uh, see that it uses highly reduced electrons and a lot of ATP. But where is that coming from? It's coming from sunlight. So the advantage of this is that we're able to nourish plants. And those plants then, in turn, can nourish the soil in a process that uses a biological catalyst at room temperature, at ordinary pressure, and um, uses sunlight to drive it. Now, um, as I mentioned, farmers uh, throughout the ancient world knew about this. They didn't know why it happened, but they could see that um, the use of legumes in agriculture to rotate or to use as a green manure would assure the fertility of their soils. In the New World, farmers used uh, the common bean, which is a New World plant. In the Mediterranean, they used uh, lupins. In China, they used soybean. And um, in uh, South Asia and Africa, the cowpea. So again, throughout the world, crop rotation has been used as a, a key element of sustainable agriculture. So from that uh, view of real nodules, I'd like to draw back just a moment for a cartoon so that I can describe this in a more simplified way. We know that we're talking about legumes and the way in which they form a symbiosis with nitrogen-fixing bacteria. And one of the key elements of this is that it's able to be used to replace nitrogen fertilizer. How does this happen? So in a um, schematic form, we can imagine that there are these bacteria, the rhizobium bacteria, that grow in the soil. They're able to grow slowly as saprophytes, just scavenging uh, nutrients from the soil. And here's a plant, which again could grow if there's fertilizer, but in the absence, it's going to have a hard time. So if we've got the right bacteria and plant, and I'm going to talk about that specificity again in a few minutes, they interact to form these. What's shown here in red are root nodules, specialized organs that grow on the root within which the bacteria are um, able to fix nitrogen. So this is where it's all happening. I love this. These are nodules. They're growing on a soybean plant. So you can see some of the nodules here, the, um, the growths that are occurring on the root. The plant is up there, and the nodules once they fix nitrogen and make uh, amino acids, that, um, the plant is able to take those amino acids, put it up in the shoot where it can make uh, chlorophyll, where it can make proteins, and it's able, and ultimately, to make high protein seeds. Now I'd like to make several points about this. First, the bacteria in these nodules are fixing nitrogen, but even that is energy intensive. And as I've mentioned, Ultimately, it's sunlight through photosynthesis that allows the plant to support this energy-intensive process of nitrogen fixation. It's occurring only in the root nodules. It doesn't occur anywhere else in the plant. This association is highly specific, and I'll show you that in a moment with a table. It's also established through a complex developmental process, and I'll show you some microsco mic microscopic views of that. And remarkably, this uh, this process is restricted, with one known exception only in the world, it's restricted to one family, the legume family. We, we know a little bit about why that occurs, but there's a lot left to find out.